let's see what we got here. I'm playing Age of the Gods. It took me a lot more effort than I thought it was going to. But, overall, and it, it, it's painful as a solitaire game, there's no question there. That's probably not an experience I'm going to do too many times again. All those hands of cards and all that quick action doesn't make it good for that. However, I can definitely see where this could be right up my alley and right up the kind of gaming group I used to be in. Uh, not so much the... I was in a kind of a group that was a mixture of war gamers and Euro gamers more recently. But prior to that, in mainly in groups that were role players who were willing to play what I call the wimp games, but also definitely were into things kind of along these lines. This reminds me most of in feel because of the kind of chaotic uh, movements that are going on in it. It's kind of a cosmic encounter type of game at the very end, but not before that. Because here's the thing, Cosmic Encounter has this magical kind of, you could always, you could win on the first turn, you know, or, or very, very early. There's no set time limit. This has a fixed time limit. So I'm going to say it's kind of a Cosmic Encounter meets History of the World. And uh, I love Cosmic Encounter. I would never want to play it solitaire. I've got it on my list probably will happen and end up getting videotaped. At least the simple version, one of the two that I have. But, and, and I feel the same with this. There's too much going on. History of the World, I play Solitaire, and it's always lacking in terms of a lot of factors that I see this having essentially taken care of. I don't like the sort of slow progression in history where you're gathering victory points and then you end the game. Uh, and maybe there's nothing anybody can do about you, or it's just sort of this clock race at the end. I don't feel like this has that same tendency for players to count points. It would be harder to do. Component-wise, components are fine. Uh, the, the only gripe I have with the counters is that I couldn't clip them because they're circle, circles that are too thick and kind of a pain. The cards shuffled well. Um, Looks-wise, the art reminded me of certain magic cards. Uh, just uh, the, the artistic style wasn't terribly to my taste, but it was very appealing and looked very professional. And You know, I mean, they clearly got the effect they were looking for. Likewise with the board they got the effect they were looking for. Um, this is sort of a clearly designed from my point of view to aim at what I'd say and with the counters too is kind of that Warhammer uh, experience which really isn't me at all but I I'm not too terribly upset by it in something like this. The, of course, it doesn't have the little plastic pieces, which pleases me to no end. Um, however, the garishness of the board, I can ignore it visually except for one thing. The cities. Those red squares are just too difficult for me to process and see. Um, also, the little area where uh, you pile the unused pieces of each race being the place where you keep track of all their pluses and, and bonuses and whatever. I knew that this would be a problem for me in, uh, in terms of look up and Membering. And when you mix that in with the difficulty with the cards, it's going to be a problem. But if I'm playing in an opposed situation against other people, I'll be able to keep track of my cards. I may be able to keep track of which cards the other people have played that are face up in front of them. At least when it's important. 
But looking to those tracks is going to be tough for me, and there's no question of that. I can't think of a solution for it because the card for the race is in your hand and nobody knows which it is. Speaking of which, uh, that's the part that I'm not sure how much better it's going to make the game. So I'm used to playing solitaire games and keeping information hidden. There's no question there. And I didn't find that to be significantly a problem. The problem, actually, the harder part was, and this is always the case for me, remembering as much as maybe I would in, a, in an opposed game. Now, in some opposed games, you get distracted, though. So I kind of look at it as, if I was playing this as, at a party, it would be, I would be about as aware as I was during this game. If there's noise distractions, and, you know, things to look at food. <laughs> and it's definitely a tough game to keep track of everything that you might know about other people uh, in that way. So that, that I would see as kind of a difficulty, but maybe part of the, the pleasure of the game. It would work better in a quiet situation, you know, a serious gaming situation. But a serious gaming situation doesn't really strike me as as much in keeping with the imagery given. You know, I I want a beer when I'm playing something that looks like this, you know, or or my drink. Um, not when I'm playing solitaire, but in a social game, if I'm playing something that looks this outlandishly fantastic. To put things nicely, and the same with the Warhammer stuff. I just can't take it the same seriousness that I would be taking something that has some appearance of reality. Subject matter, hmm, how much does it really feel like I'm a god in this game? And that's the problem, because that's what I was seeking in it. Uh, it definitely feels like I'm controlling these races, but my god power is such a minor factor in it, and the race powers, I'm not sure how much it feels like I'm a god when I'm playing, uh, you know, subterranean tunnels, and that allows my race to attack some, some other location. So, it kind of failed me there on theme, in, in, in a way that... It's disappointing, and when I first looked at it, I knew it was going to fail me on theme for other reasons, but even with the play of the cards, most of the cards, don't, I don't feel like a god. I don't feel like, you know, it's the sorcerers who create the vortexes, something we didn't see. That actually destroys a landmass. Or it's the necromancers who are raising the dead. It ain't me. I think it's a really clever system, the way the, the races are linked to the cards, and that you can use those cards to gain victory points on the betting round if you want. How balanced all the races are, I'm not sure. Uh, and balance is such a weird thing because it's not necessarily the race itself that has any particular power. It's just that there's this card associated with the race. So, who's going to get higher technology? Well, the guys whose cards probably can't can't be used for anything else might be good choices to play to increase technology, which seems a little weird, but okay. All the same, I think that's a really ingenious system. I think the idea of being able to keep things hidden and do something with any race you like, and that's kind of a god ability there. You're not just playing your race. You can make any race you like do something for you. I like that aspect a lot. A lot. And the fact that that hides what you're doing. I could be playing with your people. And you're there sitting there saying, what the hell is he doing? But you don't want to say anything. Because you don't want to reveal that, you know, you've got a reason to not understand what he's doing. You actually kind of want to try to probably use that action as a diplomatic lever against him somewhere else or, or whatever. And I can see where that aspect would be a lot of fun too. Uh, I don't get into that kind of diplomacy when I'm playing solitaire in the same way. By the way, this is another one of these games, uh, 
Pandemic was one of them, where the board is just so wonderful to touch. And that makes up for a lot of the appearance of the board. Hmm. It's kind of a weird folding. See, there's only a partial board here. I'm hoping they saved some money by doing that. The rule books. Hey, I didn't talk about these. They're actually not bad for the, uh, something that's this kind of light and glossy and colorful looking. Uh, there's not a lot of rules to the game, though. Um, but it was fairly easy to find things. They were written out in ways that in some cases, I thought that something should have been mentioned a little earlier than it was. Uh, I'm trying to remember the particular, but something in combat. Yeah, what the effect of combat was. Uh, it's kind of a missing on the goal of the game. Something like that I find useful when I'm playing something where it's not really clear what I'm trying to do. Uh, but the rules aren't that long, so you get to it pretty quickly. I'm not so thrilled with the player's guide. Big shock there. Uh, because this is a manifest of all the cards and items, and that's probably very useful. But some of the cards just aren't quite specific enough, so you need to look them up in here. You know, hey, did the fortress die there? That's kind of a. It may become clear. There seems to be a general principle of play on these, but I would almost like that to have been explicitly stated somewhere, and then the cards to be clarified in there. It also felt like there was enough room on the cards to have put the, the extra little the tiny bit of information. But overall, it feels pretty tight. Uh, there aren't any huge glaring errors. The rules, there aren't many, as I said, but they don't, they don't seem... I didn't see any conflicts with the cards where... They caused a problem, partially because there's no interrupts and stuff like that. Uh, ooh, it's listed as three to five players, and I played it in six. Mm. Uh, it definitely plays okay in six. Uh, I would not be at all bo I'm not at all bothered by the fact that somebody is running each of the races. It pleases me more than History of the World does. There's no question of that. It's more playable in terms of not having to know all kind of special stuff than something like a Britannia, and certainly shorter. Um, and I think it provides almost the same kind of pleasure, you know. Uh, the only thing that kind of disturbs me is all the magic effects, etc., mean that territory isn't as well defined. You can't move forward and, and just control things. But the different sizes of the races, the different abilities uh, linked to the cards, etc. gives it definitely some interest. And this is something I would not at all mind uh, breaking out with another group. I'm probably only going to give it a six because the solitaire experience wasn't very good. I hope that'll go up maybe to a seven. It ain't going to go any higher. Uh, <laughs> there's no way I respect this enough to say that, but even though it's a clever game and everything, I probably just have some bias against something that looks like this to the degree that, nah, it isn't going to happen, you know? That may not be true, actually. Awful Green Things sits at a 9, so, you know, it just may take more convincing to me to, to see, yeah, it, it may be, you know, it may be designed for someone who likes the Warhammer universe more than I do, but eventually I can see the game behind it. But it has more steps to take, let's say. Uh, I'm not factoring my disappointment at, not, at the uh, sales factor in here, which is, let's see how it's looked. You know, it's not incorrect. It's just, again, I walked in with higher hopes about it than perhaps it justified. Actually, I almost designed something similar to this on a historical religion's basis. Uh, and not by almost designed, I mean 
I didn't get far enough to actually, you know, have even a working system, right? Uh, and had I managed to get it to that kind of level, I probably would have still put it aside as I have with some of my other designs that have gone nowhere. But this is, you know, the, the one topic I was hoping for, not necessarily that, I'm fine with the fantasy aspect of it, to avoid the historical research, etc. But the concept of gods competing over over worshippers, that's the thing I wanted in it, and it clearly wasn't that from even just a brief look at the game. Um, but for what it is, I think it, it, it's okay. I think it's actually pretty decent. Um, I just... It's right up there, just below that 7. If the board wasn't quite so. <laughs> nah, it, I, I think it deserves the seven. I just, I want to play it in multiplayer before I give it that that bump up. But I would suspect that it's pretty good. And re hearing uh, the review of someone who does really like it, it sounds like he's hitting on the points that I think would work very well in it. Um, as long as you keep the pace up on it. All right. Uh, we're going back to SPQR, uh, but I don't know where we're heading after that. Probably nothing too big yet. Just to say, not yet. EU, not yet. <laughs> Someday soon, though, I think. <laughs>